Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Organifi. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness? Have you been considering seeing a therapist, but you're not sure where to start? BetterHelp will assess your counseling needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist so you can start getting the support you need online in under 24 hours. Special offer for Anxiety Slayer listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. Organifi creates superfood blends that offer plant-based nutrition made with high quality ingredients. Each Organifi blend is science-backed to craft the most effective doses with ingredients that are organic, free of fillers, and contain less than three grams of sugar per serving. Go to Organifi.com forward slash Slayer and use the code Slayer for 20% off your order. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Slayer. And remember to use the code Slayer for 20% off any item. Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek. Here with my good friend and co-host Ananga Sivier. Today we're discussing how to get through a rough day with anxiety by referencing our experience as well as suggestions we hear from anxiety slayers in our community. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shen. It's good to be with you again. And I'm glad that we're talking about this because we have so many ideas to help people get through a rough day with anxiety. So let's dig right in and start at the top of the list which is be kind to yourself. Anxiety will tell you that this challenging day will last forever. And it's simply not true. Yeah. So important to just really slow down, take a deep breath and promise yourself a day of kindness. We might have had a break from anxiety for some weeks or months. So that can come with a real sense of dread when we feel like it's coming back and How long is it going to last? Or am I going to be stuck like this forever? And the thing is, anxiety can ebb and flow. And we just need to always be ready to be kind and up the self-care. I agree 100%. Self-care is everything. And kindness, treating yourself with kindness and others with kindness. We often do really well at being kind to others and and those that we love and, and forget to put ourselves at the front of the line. And speaking of that, another suggestion is to take a self-care day, a complete day devoted to you and self-care. And the more we invest in a self-care day, the quicker the anxiety will settle and it won't reach so far into the future. It, It really can be helped greatly by just throwing up the white flag and surrendering and accepting and going deeper into self-care. And everybody's self-care day may look a little bit different. I know that ours are similar when, when we're feeling a little bit jangly and we both love to read something inspiring. We have each other, thankfully, to connect with and, and our daughters and, and close friends because connecting with a friend is important when you're feeling low to spend some time, even a conversation, whether it's in person or on the phone or however you can connect. Friends have a way of of really lifting us up and helping us feel lighter. Yeah, really important. And sometimes anxiety makes us feel like isolating. And we need to know the difference between am I really isolating and and drawing myself away? Or do I need a quiet day with a little contact? Do I need a conversation? Do I need to connect? Do I need to be heard? Have a laugh or even check in on someone and see how they're doing and, and also share what you're going through. And then you might need some time out. So we really need to know, am I just shutting myself away because I feel bad and I think I'm not coping well or I think I'm stupid? Sometimes we're really hard on ourselves. Have a look and see. Connection can be the best medicine. And then also any sort of calming or grounding practice is helpful, whether you have a yoga practice or a meditation practice, or as we always tell you to get outside and do some grounding amongst nature. It's so vital to your mental health 
that you have these practices. Somebody recently in our Facebook group shared that they use the five senses grounding technique. And this is the one where you name five things you can see, four that you can feel, three that you can hear, two that you can smell, and one that you can taste. And this is such a simple technique and it works so well. It puts you right in the present moment and is very calming and very relaxing. And this is something that my daughter used to do when she was in school, in high school, to uh, help her become more calm and relaxed. Yeah, it's a great practice because it really draws us into the present moment and it stops our mind spinning out. And sometimes our senses are bringing in disturbance. You know, when we feel anxious, we might give ourselves a day at home and then just walk around the home looking at all the things we should be doing. So we're using our eyes to see, oh, I should take care of this. I should have done that. And we start to become overwhelmed. So using the senses in a relaxing way, it just turns off all that overstimulation, all the incoming things that can disturb us and increase anxiety, puts us in the present moment and is mindfully using our senses to just ground us in that moment. And it's surprisingly effective. We also need to mention that it's incredibly important to eat and rest well when you're feeling anxious. So often we put off eating or we just don't feel like it, or maybe our tummy's a little upset, or we might have some nausea or whatever, and and we kind of blow it off, put it off. We can also be in a pattern where we are ruminating and in looping thoughts, so we're not getting any sleep. And so we need to address this. We need to understand that traveling back to the past, to challenging times and being afraid of them happening again isn't helpful. Or you might be in a space of dreading upcoming events and what to do and how to cope and really drawing in the anxiety from the future into your present moment, stealing away the joy of your present moment. Instead of focusing on what's gone wrong in the past and what we're worried about in the future, we can benefit greatly by taking good care of ourselves now. Yeah, again, coming back to the present moment. And I think one of the biggest challenges on a rough anxiety day is that we can spend hours lost in thought. It can be very hard to direct your mind to self care when you're feeling anxious. And it's the easiest thing to just pick up your phone and think you're going to check something quickly. And then an hour later, you're just there scrolling, scrolling. And all the time that's happening, we're distracting ourselves, but distracting ourselves with something that actually can increase anxiety because, again, we're bringing in more stimulation to the mind and no nourishment. So it's so helpful to just stop and think, what can I make for lunch or dinner that's going to help me feel really nourished, grounded, and help me know that I've taken good care of myself? And it can take a little bit of effort. And we're going to share something later in in this episode that can help with that. But really important to focus on eating warm, nourishing, easy to digest meals when we're having a rough day. So even something simple like soup with some extra olive oil and whole wheat bread or a vegetable stew, rice and vegetables, something grounding and comforting that helps nourish us and also helps calm anxiety because Ayurveda teaches that these are the things we should be eating when we feel stressed and anxious that will help us. It's the easiest thing to just eat potato chips or grab snacks and space out scrolling, but it's going to make us feel worse. It really is. And then of course, there's getting rest and listening to something soothing, relaxing and curling up or reading something that's uplifting making yourself as comfy as you possibly can, nesting up and letting your body and mind just rest. Often an an anxious mind spoils our rest. We were just talking about that in in our last couple of episodes. And so our body might look still, but our mind is spinning. This is where walking and yoga can also help with active relaxation and releasing anxiety. I love the practice of yin yoga for getting grounded and back in my body and resting. It's such a nice, sweet practice. 
Yeah. It's amazing to me how quickly yoga or qigong can help if I'm going through a difficult day, help me feel really safe and more positive. We talked about the grounding practice of using your five senses. You can take that outside on a walk. It's a really nice one to do at this time of year, you know, when it comes to sounds, hearing your feet crunch through the leaves if, if it's fall where you're living or if it's not, just hearing your feet thud on the earth. I like listening out for bird song. Um, looking at the different colours of leaves, looking at the colours and hues of the sky, the clouds. Just take that mindful practice outside on a walk. Even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes, it will make a big difference. It really does. And then, of course, breath work. Breathing through anxiety episodes is incredibly helpful whether it's belly breathing, alternate nostril breathing, the long exhale. Uh, we have a anxiety slayer that wrote to us that said belly breathing was such a big help and that she and her therapist had been working on that a lot. And also acceptance, which she's still working on, catching herself in that space of beating herself up and thinking she's all alone with her panic and anxiety, and then watching it get worse and realizing that if she talks to herself and says, okay, here's what's going on. This is a panic attack, or this is an anxiety attack. I'm accepting it. And here's what I know to do. And then goes back to her breathing practice. And, and that is such a key part of anxiety attacks and anxiety episodes to accept where you're at. And then remember your tools and resources and what you can do. Why does breathing help so much? I think it's important that we bring that forward. Why does breathing help us so much get beyond feeling so anxious? All the natural healing traditions, yoga, Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine, they all teach to look at our breathing and how our breathing affects our emotions. Every unsettled emotion has a corresponding breathing pattern. But in China, they teach children to breathe to control anger. Anger has a very agitated and they describe it as a ragged breathing pattern. Uh, anxiety has a very shallow, fleeting, high up in your chest breathing pattern. And the mind is influenced by the rate of our breath. So when our breathing becomes shallow and we're not getting the air properly in our lungs, it just sends more information to the mind that I'm anxious. And the mind feeds right back, yeah, you are, right back into your breath. And it just goes in this awful loop, which can escalate into, a, into an attack, an anxiety attack. So it's really good to notice our breathing patterns. Sometimes we need help to do that. Sometimes we need help to work with our breathing because of that fixation that can happen with anxiety in the breath. So that's where guided breathing is really helpful, where you can follow a guided practice. Yes, I'm, I'm grateful for all of the guided practices that I have used over the years for the ones that we've created and just for knowing what my choices are, whether, whether it be just stopping for a moment and taking a deep cleansing breath and dropping my shoulders, relaxing my jaw. Like, oh, wow, I didn't realize I was carrying all that stress where in my body that way. Ah, I can let it go. Yeah. And as we've often shared on the podcast, that simplest technique, the long exhale, where you just focus on making an out breath as long as you can and counting it. Because when we're anxious, we tend to gasp rapidly for air. But you can do that for yourself. Okay, I'm getting anxious. I can see my breathing's coming up. And then we can start really worrying about our heart rate and all sorts of other concerns, instead of doing that, just think, okay, breathe out long and smooth and slow. Breathe out, just empty your lungs and count, then pause for a couple of seconds, then breathe in steadily as you can for the count of four, hold it for a couple of counts, and then out again as long as you can, hopefully a seven or eight count out. And by the time you've done that three or four times, you can really feel a difference. After the break, we'll share several more tips on how to get through a rough day with anxiety. Are stress and anxiety interfering with your happiness and preventing you from living your best life? 
There have been a few times in my life where I've needed some extra support, and I wish I'd had the option for online support. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. To be clear, BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online, and their service is available for clients worldwide. You get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you don't have to leave the comfort of your own home. It's more affordable than traditional in-person counseling, and financial aid is available. You can start living a happier life today. Special offer for Anxiety Slayer listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com forward slash slayer. I've been including superfoods in my diet for many, many years, and I just found a new product that I absolutely love. Organifi is a line of organic superfood blends that offers plant-based nutrition made with high-quality ingredients. Their green juice is one of my absolute favorites and contains essential superfoods and a clinical dose of ashwagandha, which helps reduce stress and supports healthy cortisol levels. Organifi Gold is another favorite of mine. It's a superfood tea that supports rest and relaxation so you can wake up feeling refreshed. It's a perfect tea right before bedtime. Each Organifi blend is easy to use by simply mixing it with water or your favorite beverage or smoothie. Organifi takes pride in offering the best tasting superfood products on the market at a price that works out to less than $3 a day. Go to Organifi.com forward slash Slayer and use the code Slayer for 20% off your order. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com forward slash Slayer. And remember to use the code Slayer for 20% off any item. Before the break, we shared several ways to get through a rough day with anxiety. Here are a few more suggestions, starting with don't fight it. What we resist persists, and fighting anxiety just fans and feeds the flames of what you're already experiencing. It goes back to what I was mentioning earlier is to accept it and then go back to, all right, I know this is how I'm feeling. What do I know to do? How can I support myself? I think it's helpful to talk a little bit about how we fight it. So we know what to look out for in that internal dialogue. Fighting anxiety sounds like, I hate it. I don't want to feel like this again. Those kinds of comments, um, just really objecting to it, which is easily done because it feels so awful, but it simply doesn't help. So just looking out for those words where it's, oh, I hate feeling like this. I hate anxiety. It's all feeding the flames and anxiety is going to come right back up. Mm, good point. Mine is, I thought I was done with this. Why is this coming back? Yep. Or making myself wrong. And instead of just being like, okay, here it is. What do I know to do? How can I care for myself? Oh, this makes sense. Of course, you're feeling a bit stressed. A, B, and C have been going on. How can you care for yourself? That leads us to going back to the basics, right? Yeah, noticing what might have triggered our anxiety. So just slowing down and having a think. Sometimes things have been going on for a month or two under our awareness, building up, and then it topples. It reaches that tipping point, and we have some anxiety come up. We might be overtired, we might be undernourished, we might be going through a transition, even a good transition could cause anxiety because anxiety is provoked by change. So again, to just be kind. If there are things going on in your life that involve change that can escalate anxiety, just have a look. It can be the climate, it can be stress building up, it can be a confrontation from a while ago that's playing on your mind. All kinds of things can lead to anxiety escalating. In this time of year, 
anxiety can start to escalate because of our concerns around the holidays, around what's been happening around the world with COVID, with all of the things we need to get done, you know, that, that list, that pile that starts to grow in our mind and to be aware that that isn't helping you either. To just take a moment, figure out what needs doing, and then spread it out over the period of time that you can or ask for help. It's really important because, yeah, in the midst of all the things that we're asking you to do, grounding and journaling and meditating and all that, you're also in the midst of your life. And there's things to do. There's shopping to do and food to prepare and people to see and so on and so forth. Bills to pay, right? So we allow ourselves to also be in the basics of of that and, and allowing for whatever needs to be done and to do so with as much uh, sweetness as we can without making it bigger than it really is. Yeah, even just changing our attitude towards anxiety completely changes our experience of it. You know, it's not helpful to suggest a load of things than, and you feel overwhelmed and you're already busy and it's like, how am I going to fit these in? Just pick one or two of our suggestions and and try them out. Go for what appeals to you most, what feels easiest for you to bring into your day so that there's no overwhelm. And then also remember what's helped you before. What have you done in the past that has helped you feel much better and calm your mind when you've been facing a high level of anxiety and and feeling really low? What have you done? And how have you brought more peace into your space and into your life at the end of the day. That's really important because chances are you're going to come up with many things that you've done in the past that have helped you. And again, that's where it's helpful to talk with a friend because sometimes we need a little support to bring that mindset in because anxiety is a terrible naysayer. So whatever it takes to kindle some hope and Encourage yourself that, yeah, I've done this before. I've got through this before and I can do it again. Let's talk about the creation of an in case of anxiety plan. This is something we brought up many years ago that I think is so helpful, especially for our new listeners that may not already have a plan and to put you back in a space of feeling a little bit more in control of how you can care for yourself. brings forward a little bit more about what we were just talking about, how remembering what's helped before, only in this case, you actually put a plan together so that when you're feeling a little out of your body, when you're feeling a little out of sorts, you know you can go right to this journal or this note card or what have you and get help immediately. This was an idea that I learned um, from living with chronic illness, something to have to hand when you're having a really difficult day and Sometimes people might ask, what do you need? And you feel so overwhelmed and so uh, caught up in the experience of being in pain or uncomfortable, or in this case, anxious, that you don't even know what to say. So this is a really helpful thing to do. You can have a special notebook where you write down on the first page your plan um, and then keep the other pages for writing down triumphs, things you've tried that have really helped you, and, and just keep that by you as a positive notebook for things to do, keeping a log of things that you know help. But it's also helpful to have this on a sheet of paper stuck on the wall, maybe in your kitchen. I have a friend who was living with chronic illness who put this by her kettle in the kitchen and she had a list of things that helped. So other family members, if if they asked her, what do you need? And she said, I don't even know. She'd say, I do know, go to the list by the kettle. And then It was by the kettle because there were some good herb teas there as well, and that was on the list. (laughs) It's a really good thing to do. So some examples are to get a piece of paper and just write down what helps. And at the top of the list is asking for help. It's okay to ask for help. And the next one, and this really does need to be written down on the list, is take all pressure off yourself. We can spend a whole day when we're anxious trying to do the things we think we should be doing and get nothing done. And at the end of the day, we just feel worse because we've achieved nothing. So write it down. Take all pressure off. Whatever you need to write, I allow myself 
to rest. I give myself permission to rest, stop and Mm -hmm. rest, have it there, have it there as a principle. And it might, it might seem silly, but it's important to also add something like, do you need to eat to your list? Because we forget, we get spun out, we forget to eat, we forget to get nourishment in our bodies. It doesn't even occur to us. You get to a space to be like, oh my goodness, how did it get to be 5 p.m. and I haven't had anything to eat yet? Yep. Uh, warming, calming, herbal teas, you'll, we'll never stop mentioning those. <laughs> get those in your body, especially, especially now as the the weather is getting cooler in the northern hemisphere. Make sure you're doing that. Also, rescue remedy. Take some rescue remedy. Have rescue remedy on hand. Carry it in your purse. Have it available in your kitchen. It's really a wonderful partner when you're suffering. Yeah. And of course, on the list goes tapping, EFT tapping. Do some EFT tapping. That's how I'd have it on my list. (laughs) Just the direction to do it. And you might not do all of these, but you might just, in a particularly awful anxious moment, scan through the list and think, okay, I can take some rescue remedy. It takes a few seconds. Um, I can make a cup of chamomile tea or some pucker love tea or pucker relax or some mint tea, some ginger tea. I can make a cup of tea, I can take some rescue remedy, and I can try tapping for five minutes. And again, that's where a guided session, unless you've Learn how to tap from one of our courses for yourself, which is great. But there are also guided tapping sessions available, and we have many on our Patreon. And you can just listen and follow along and tap with us. Really some good ideas here. And lots of good ideas today to help you get through a rough day with anxiety. We really appreciate you listening to Anxiety Slayer, that you keep coming back week after week. Thank you, Ananga, for another excellent episode. And to all of our listeners, if you want to dive deeper into this topic, you're welcome to continue on our Patreon, where you can get a deeper dive into some of the topics we cover, as well as over 100 downloads for supporting our show. You can learn more at patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer.